Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. It's maiden day for the Dynam PT-17. <laughs> I do need to let you know this video is sponsored by BitGo. They sent the PT-17 for review. So if you're in the market for a Dynam airplane or Detrim radio equipment like the DT-9 transmitter, Skylord ESCs, those Z3 autopilots, make sure you give Bitco Hobby a look. They've been a very good partner to the channel. They've sent a lot of equipment to us for review, so you guys can get a first-hand look at hardware before you spend your money. So if that information is valuable to you, just pay them a visit and see if they can help you out. Regarding the build, I don't have a whole lot to tell you. I was right during the first look to say that I thought most of the time would be spent doing the details like the wiring on the wings. That, that does take some time. I mean, there's nothing particularly challenging about it. It just takes some time to do it. And then as far as the balance goes, I just want to point out that I'm using the factory CG of, they say 75 to 80. I've got mine at 80. And I'm using a 2650 four cell LiPo battery. I didn't have any problems during the build. A couple little quick tips. You want to take a drill that's about the size of the hole of the wheels and just ream it a little bit because when I put the wheels on they bound but just by putting a drill in and just kind of running it back and forth a few times I got those spinning nice and free, no issues at all. The cabanes all work the way they're supposed to and they're, they're actually self keying so if you just pay attention to where you put the wings on you won't have any problem getting the cabanes lined up right or the, or the struts for that matter. Also notice I put a little shrink tubing on the cabane struts there just to hide the uh, wiring for the lights. This plane did not come with a pilot. I put that pilot in from my stash and I know some of you are gonna say he should be in the back, some will say he's supposed to be in the front. I'm just, he's glued in on the front because that's where he fits. The back cockpit was just a little bit smaller and I didn't feel like chopping him up. One thing I'll, I will point out on the back, uh, you might notice the tape on the hinge there. On the way to the field in the back of the truck, it must have bumped because it took the EPO hinge out. So I did a quick little field repair I'll work on that when I get back. I will take that off and probably hinge it correctly. One other thing I'll point out is that the these braces in the back, they're not very tensioned. I don't expect they'll come loose in flight because there's just not enough room to go, but they're a little floppy. There's no tension and all four of them are on. I also thought for a minute when I put the others on that it would tighten them up, but, but I think that's just the way it's designed and they do use little tiny plastic clips down there to hold those springs on. Again, that's a piano, that's a Blenderm piano hinge on the rudder, and it's just a temporary field repair so I can get the Maiden done today. Other than that, this plane went together really well. The graphics are very cool. The visibility, I think, will be very cool. I didn't have any issues with balance. I do have the battery all the way here. Let me show you the battery real quick. There's my Nanotech 2650, and that gets me the balance right at the 80 millimeter mark, and it is all the way up forward. And then the ESC is right there next to the battery. That is as far back as it can go. It can't really go forward any further because you run into foam up there on the firewall up front. And my receiver is right down there at the bottom on a strip of Velcro. So that's it, let's go fly. One thing I'll point out is that I have the Waco and these planes are very similar. So when I set up the configuration for this plane, I just use the Waco as a template. And I use the same rates, the same throws, because I got that Waco dialed in. It's like the wind is coming from across the runway, so it's my choice. I'm going to take off left or right. Here we go, maiden flight of the Dynam PT-17. Beautiful. Nice easy takeoff. Just like the Waco, I had no ground handling issues, no coupling issues. And uh, boy, that trim looks spot on. Very little work on the trim. Oh man, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Nav lights look really good. They're highly visible. That is hands off. Yeah, I had literally like two clicks of aileron trim and that's it. Yeah, nice. Boy, I can see the nav lights from here. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick them up, but I saw that port red nav light from here. Easy. I can still see it. I'm going to do a yaw trim, even though I got a goofy rudder right now. I'm going to do the yaw trim anyway. Oh, that's perfect. Well, I'll tell you what, that's just one straight airframe. 
Let's go inverted and see what happens. Little bit of forward elevator pushing the stick forward, but it's not bad. Well, I can tell you guys right now that it feels just like the Waco, which is no surprise. I mean, it's the same weight class, same wingspan, a little bit more powerful motor. But if you remember on the Waco, I added a three-bladed prop. So a little more power out of that with a three-bladed prop. All right, I'm going to shoot a couple of approaches now just to see from a landing standpoint what I'm up against. little fast I need to slow it down a little bit that was okay a little fast again I, I think I just need to back it out on the approach a little bit more I'm coming in too short of a final so I'm just gonna go out a little bit farther visibility is good on this plane too I, I mentioned that in the uh, first look that I expected the visibility to be quite good and it is there we go that's better I can do better. That rigid gear, it's just like I said, you have to grease this landing in because if you don't, it's going to bounce. That gear is pretty rigid. Oh, you know what? I said I would do some grass field lops. Let's do that before I run out of battery. Let's take off off the grass and see how it does. I expected this thing to do okay because it's got those tall skinny wheels, but let's see. Take off, no problem. No problem on the takeoff. It felt a little more draggy, of course, than the runway, you know, but that's to be expected. All right, let's try the grass field landing. Perfect. Yeah, you can't complain about that. Whoa, whoa, ah! <laughs> it, it got dragged. Yeah, that's getting deleted. <laughs> You know that's just not acceptable for me so we got to do that grass field takeoff again that was my fault not enough elevator all right let's try that again that's better just got to have some elevator that's all All right, guys, there's the Maiden on the Dynam PT-17. Fun plane, man, I like it. It's uh, just like the Waco. Just, I mean, it feels so much like that plane. Similar weight, similar power, similar handling characteristics. I mean, it's a very similar plane. I think the one thing that I notice is on the longitudinal axis, maybe a little less authority, but remember the Waco's got ailerons top and bottom. This one only has them on the bottom. So maybe a little less authority, but not, I mean, you know, so what? This is fun to fly. It, and I do like flying the Waco. I can imagine the Stearman will be very similar. I should have a lot of fun with this plane. Very good flight characteristics. Easy enough grass field handling. Although, you know, you saw the one take off. That was my fault because I just didn't have enough elevator. But I'd say overall, man, this is a solid plane. I enjoy it quite a bit. All right, I checked over the Stearman. Everything looks good. We're going to take it up for a second flight. That wind is almost straight across the runway, but it looks like it's coming, feels like it's coming from the right just a little, so I'm going to turn back around. <laughs> I can feel the drag from that camera on that wing, that's funny.
really quick. Yeah. My uncle used to own a real steerman, and he used to tell us, when you guys fly this airplane, when you land, you have to fly it until you park it and tie it down. Yeah. Because if not, it's going to get out of your hands. And you notice that on taxi, you do really good with it. But yes, it's an airplane that you have to fly it until you're home and bed and at supper and all that stuff. <laughs> that is a very pretty airplane. Very nice. Yeah, this was a man. This trained a lot, almost like all of our World War II combat pilots got their, almost all of them got their wings in this plane. Do you, want to, do you want to fly it? No, that's all right, man. You go ahead. Oh, a little bouncy. Oh, a little bouncy. Little bou I knew that. You got you to gotta land this plane, man. No doubt That's about it. That's what my uncle used to say. You have yeah. to fly, even when you're taxiing. Well, I was definitely, I was definitely modulating the throttle, but it, it, takes, a, it takes a smooth touch. But I, I said that during the build review that, or the, uh, during the unbox, that the gear is very rigid. And it's not going to be forgiving, and it's not. You have to, you can't, you have to land this one. Yeah, not only that, the landing gear is quite forward, so you got a lot of weight in the back. You want some tent to, to have the tail in the front and the motor in the back. Yeah, it's an airplane, you got to fly it. It actually flies better than a taxi. <laughs> oh, it flies great. It flies beautiful. That's too fast. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that one. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the first look, the build recap, and the maiden flight of the Dynam PT-17. If you'd like to get one for yourself, make sure you check Bitco Hobbies out. They've got them. That's all I've got for today. If you like the video, please subscribe. Take it easy.